Hello, statistics students. Today and for the next couple of lessons, we're going to talk about frequency distributions. Let's take a look at uh, what a frequency distribution is. The word frequency tells us how often something happens. And a distribution is a listing or a graph or something that tells us two things. It tells us the values or attributes that your variable takes on. For instance, what values does X take on, or if you're measuring hair color, or what are the different hair colors? And then how often does it take on those values or attributes? So a frequency distribution is um, going to tell us these two things, how often some, or what happens and how often it happens. And we're, you could either have your data in a table or in a graph depending on what type of data you're looking at. There are a number of types of frequency distributions that we will encounter um, over the course of this school year. This is the normal curve. Um, outside of statistics, people know this as the bell curve. And these are your values that your data takes on. And the height of the curve tells you, relatively speaking, how often it takes on those values. So if we're measuring the average height of the adult American woman, I think that's around 5'3 or 5'4. That would be right here. And you'd see that the largest number, and maybe, and I don't know, I think it's a two standard D, um, two inch standard D. But anyway, you can see here between maybe 5'1 and 5'5, five, five, you have, a, if you look at the area under the curve between five foot one and five foot five, you would have a whole bunch of women. Most of your adult American women would fall in there. And then you'd have some who are a lot shorter and a lot taller. But anyway, it's telling us the heights and how often we could expect um, women to have those heights. This is a different type of distribution. This is called the uniform distribution. It is generated with numbers from zero to one, inclusive, I believe. And every number between zero and one is equally likely to happen. That's why, you know, here at point one, this is your probability that you'd get a point one. Point two, up here. So it's the uniform distribution. This down here is a binomial distribution, and we'll spend a lot of time um, talking on that, about that in, I believe, chapter four, maybe chapter five of our current textbook. When we do a graph of a frequency distribution, it's easy to see some of these things. We're looking, when we want to describe it, we want to describe its center, shape, and spread. In other words, what's the center of the graph? If we we're talking about the heights of adult American women, the center would be about five foot three. What is the shape of the graph? Well, generally speaking, I have reason to believe that um, that graph would be normal or bell-shaped. So you have a lot of women really close to five foot three, and then the shorter, you know, you go, you know, the farther away you go from five foot three to the left or to the right, you're gonna get a lot fewer women. There aren't very many women who are five foot nine in this country. There aren't very um, many women who are four foot seven either. So we're talking about the center and the shape here. If all women were the same height, the eh, shape would be uniform. And then spread, some measure of how spread out are the data. Um, are all women between this height and this height? Or do they go from here to here? Or are they, is there such a spread? Maybe we're saying, okay, these outliers over here on the low side, and these outliers over here on the high side, we're not gonna worry about that. Just tell me how spread out the middle 50% of the data is. We wanna have some idea of how spread out the data is. So when we're analyzing a frequency distribution, we want to look at center, shape, and spread. So in a frequency distribution, your data could be in a list, 
it um, could be in a graph. What we're what I'm going to do now is just show you where in the textbook these are, so that you can um, know what to look for when we discuss them in class. On page 40, there is an example of a frequency distribution in a list. And here it is. Get that a little bigger. Some of you are looking on small screens. This is on page 40 of our current textbook. This over here tells us what values um, the variable takes on. This tells us how often it takes on those um, values. So that is a legitimate frequency distribution. Um, to construct a frequency distribution from a bunch of data, we have the instruction or the guidelines at the bottom of page 40. And we will go over these in detail in class. Wouldn't hurt to read them in advance so that you know what to um, expect. And then in class, we're going to go step by step through this example problem, number one in the book, and we'll explain each step exactly what they're doing and how it relates to the five step guidelines we looked at just a moment ago. So a lot of this class is going to be um, synchronous as we'll call it. This is, you don't get a full on lecture on this today because it's just gonna require a lot of explanation and answering of your questions. So with that, let's end this video and have a great day.